Thanks for the click. Welcome to this video on how to download all your data in Google Drive. We're going to dive into your account settings and I'm going to show you how to download all your data without tying up your internet connection for longer than you need to. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of settings. Or depending on the option we select, it's not going to tie up your internet connection at all. Thanks again for the click. My name is Steve and if you're looking for simplified tutorials without all of the jargon, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to get notified of future videos. All right, so let's get to work. All right, so the first thing you want to do is open up your Chrome web browser or any web browser that you're going to use. At the top in the URL bar, type in myaccount.google.com or if you are logged into Chrome, click on your profile picture in the upper right and then click on manage your Google account. That'll open your Google account dashboard. Once the page loads, under privacy and personalization, click on manage your data and personalization. Then scroll down to the section that says things you create and do, then click on the drive icon. The page that loads is going to show you all the different Google apps that you have access to. So Gmail, AdSense if you use AdSense, uh, the Google Play Store, Maps, everything. What we're going to look for is the drive section. So once you see the drive icon, click on the down arrow, then click on the three dots and click on download data. At the top of this page, you're going to see a list of archives or just maybe your latest archive that you've made if you've made archives before. You can choose to download it right here on this page or you can click on manage archives and this will show you a list of archives that you've made in the past. Let's go back a page. We'll scroll down and we're going to start creating our new archive. Keep in mind that once you create this archive, only you have access to it and the archive doesn't actually delete the data from your drive. It just puts it into a more compact format like a zip file. If you want to actually delete your Google Drive data, I'll put a link for a video that explains that in the description. By default, the box should be checked next to files you own that have been stored in your My Drive and computers. You can click on any of these links for more information. Under the multiple formats section, we're going to take a look at that. And we can actually designate how we want to download these files. So for example, we can download Google Docs files as docx format or PDF format. Same thing with drawings. We can save those as JPEGs, PDFs, or PNGs. By default, everything's going to save in a format that should be able to load back into Drive or open up in a Microsoft application such as Word, PowerPoint, or Excel. So take a look at these settings and make sure you understand what you're setting these to and that you're setting it into a format that is right for your needs. I'm going to click Cancel because I don't want to change anything. Next, we're going to take a peek under Advanced Settings. If there are historical versions of any of your documents, you can include the historical versions in your backup. If you don't include historical versions, then only the latest version of the document will be saved. Go ahead and check this box if you want to include the historical versions. Then you'd click OK. The next section is actually where you decide what folders you want to put in your backup. If you want to include all of your data, then I wouldn't mess with this section at all. But if you want to get more specific with what you include and exclude, then go ahead and click this button. If you scroll through the list and you see that there are some folders that you want to exclude, then do this. Go back to the top, uncheck the box next to include all files and folders in Drive, and that's going to unlock the list below. Then you can deselect the folders that you don't want to include, or you can click deselect all, which deselects all the folders, and then you can choose the folders that you want to back up. Then click OK. You can also click on the show more products button to download data for any additional Google products that you have. For this tutorial, we're going to focus directly on Google Drive, so we're not going to mess with this option here. We'll click Next Step. Now on the Customize Archive Format step, this is where we'll choose how to download our data. For whatever option we choose, we'll keep in mind that Google is going to do all the processing on their end. So it's not going to slow down our internet connection until we actually download the file, the archive file that they send us. You can have them send you an email letting you know when the file is ready, so then you can download it. Or you can choose the option to have them put the backup directly into Google Drive so you don't even have to download the file. As another option, you can also tell Google to back the file up directly to a third-party application such as Dropbox or OneDrive. We're going to have them send a download link to my email in this case. Next, we'll choose the export type. If you want this to be a one-time archive, then we'll keep the one-time archive selected. If you want Google to create an export every two months, then select the second option. Unfortunately, there's no other customization for this step. You're kind of stuck with the one-time event or an export every two months, so six archives a year. In this case, we're going to do the one-time archive. Let's scroll down. Next, we can choose the file type and size for the archive. 
under file type, there's the two options for either a zip folder or a .tgz. In most cases, the zip file is going to work just fine, so we'll keep the .zip for now. You can also choose a different file size to download. I really don't have any hangups with the 2GB option that they have here as the default, but for you, just keep in mind that the larger the file, the longer it's going to take to download and it's going to slow down your internet connection. But if that's not an issue for you, then you can choose the 50 gigabyte option. If your backup is larger than the option you select, then Google is automatically going to break that up into several smaller chunks. So if you have 100 gigabytes and you choose the 50 gigabyte option, Google will create two 50 gigabyte archive files. For me, the smaller file sizes are a little bit easier to handle. Now that we've set those options, we're going to click Create Archive. At this point, Google is creating the archive file. You may get an email from Google letting you know that an archive was requested. If you didn't make the request, I recommend you clicking this Check Activity button and choose the No Secure Account option. Optionally, you can select the Yes It Was Me to let Google know that you were the one that actually made the request. Now let's go back. You can also choose to cancel the archive, at which point Google will stop making the backup. Or you can choose to create another archive. Let's say if you only selected a subset of folders and you want to create an archive for another subset, you can do that here by clicking the Create Another Archive button. Once Google has finished making your archive, they're going to send you an email notification letting you know that it's ready. They'll also show you a date for how long this archive is going to be available for. So make sure you download the archive before the expiration date. Once you're ready to download it, you can click the Download Archive button. For security, they may ask you to log in again, and this will bring you back to the Manage Archive page. This is where you'll find the archive and then you can click the download archive button. And that's all there is to it. So now you know how to archive your data in Google Drive and either send it to your email as a download link or back it directly up into your Drive, Dropbox or OneDrive. If this video is helpful for you, make sure you click the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you're looking for more tutorials to help you work smarter. I'm out.